we have known for some time that atrial fibrillation is associated with poorer cognitive function, greater cognitive decline, and a higher risk of dementia. Less is known about other arrhythmias, particularly those which are precursors or upstream to atrial fibrillation, such as premature atrial contractions or PACs. My name is Dr. Lin Yi Chen. I'm a tenured professor of medicine and a director of cardiac electrophysiology at the University of Minnesota. I'm also an NIH funded clinician investigator and my research program is focused on atrial fibrillation, specifically to define the mechanisms underlying the relationship of AFib to cardiovascular and neurocognitive outcomes. To address the knowledge gap of arrhythmias and cognitive function, we report our findings in this paper, which will be published in the May 2021 issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Frequent premature atrial contractions are associated with poorer cognitive function in the atherosclerosis risk in communities study or the ERIC study. This paper was led by a previous PhD student, Dr. Mary Rooney. Dr. Rooney's goal was to evaluate the association of PAC frequency with cognitive test scores and prevalence of dementia or mild cognitive impairment in the ERIC study. This was a cross-sectional analysis at ERIC visit six exam. This study included more than 2,100 participants without prevalent AFib at visit six who also underwent cognitive testing and wore a two-week ambulatory heart rhythm monitor. We categorized PAC frequency based on percent of beats. Minimal was less than 1%, occasional was 1% to 5%, and frequent was greater than 5%. We evaluated cognitive domain-specific factor scores reflecting memory, executive function, language and also global cognitive function. We also evaluated dementia and mild cognitive impairment which were adjudicated. We found that as compared with participants with minimal PACs, those with frequent PACs had lower executive function and lower global cognitive function. Moreover, participants with frequent PACs as compared with those with minimal PACs had higher odds of prevalent dementia or mild cognitive impairment. And these associations are independent of cardiovascular and dementia risk factors, including stroke. So what is the relevance of these findings? There are two important implications. First, to our knowledge, this is the first study which reports an association between PACs and lower cognitive function. And this study adds to the growing body of evidence to indicate that contrary to popular belief, frequent PACs are not entirely benign. In fact, they are prognostically relevant and in this case, associated with poorer cognitive function. Second, frequent PACs are after all a manifestation or an expression of abnormality in the underlying atria. These abnormalities include electrical, structural, or functional abnormalities, collectively known as atria myopathy or atria cardiopathy. Hence, our study adds to this growing body of evidence that implicates atria myopathy, which is upstream to AF, AF as being prognostically relevant and perhaps a therapeutic target. Currently, there are several ways to treat frequent PACs, namely medications such as beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, or even the use of rhythm medications such as antiarrhythmic drugs. For very frequent PACs that are amenable to catheter ablation, that can also be considered. However, currently, frequent PACs are not specifically treated unless 
they are symptomatic or if associated with underlying abnormalities in the heart. This study indicates that perhaps one day we can consider treating frequent PACs even if they are not symptomatic in order to reduce the risk of neurocognitive outcomes. However, this will need to be confirmed in more definitive studies such as a clinical trial. So what are our future directions? Well, this was a cross-sectional study. We now have follow-up cognitive function test data and new dementia events. So to confirm the findings of this study, we will evaluate the prospective association of PACs at visit six with change in cognitive function and incident dementia, a longer term goal. Perhaps at some time, studies should be focused on determining whether treating factors that are upstream to AFib, such as PACs or H-myopathy, would have clinical benefit in reducing cardiovascular and also neurocognitive outcomes. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the paper. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.